this month of September we are celebrating the month devoted for the uh, for the catechism. At the same time, we try to reflect on the different vocation we have in our church. And so the parish uh, we are preparing some activities, especially for the catechism and uh, and for the vocation we are featuring some of the uh, parishioners. Uh, in our, I mean, the parishioners will try to share their life in their chosen vocation. And we know that our aim goal is to enter heaven, to be with God. And this uh, lifestyle or the chosen vocation, our way to for sanctity, especially when we do it with joy in our service, faithfulness in our commitment. And so, in this video, we try to feature the different activities, the daily activities of our seminary for those who are thinking of entering the seminary it is a good way for us to know about their life and as Jesus said to Nathanael, no? come and see so hopefully you could also come and see the beauty of what it is to serve with God Hi, my name is Seminarian Romel Ronquillo Carubio from Metropolitan Cathedral of Immaculate Conception. Before I entered the seminary, I was an altar server. A seminarian must live a fruitful and prayerful life. But Seminarian must also focus on other aspects of formation, the intellectual, the human, the pastoral, and the spiritual formation, so that they can be able to stand by themselves and to follow obediently the formation. I am called to follow the footstep of Jesus Christ. How? To follow his example day by day we need and I need to see Jesus as the center of my life because without Jesus I am nothing Hi, I'm Seminar Anzulu Salavar from Our Lady of Pillar Parish of Italy. It started, um, my, my vocation started when I encountered Christ in my life. I, I was once an unbeliever, but my friend, uh, she invited me to a non-Catholic denomination. Then there I encounter Christ in my life. Then um, during that uh, time, I realized that uh, all of the all of the things that I'm uh, na inahanap ko dito sa mundo, dun ko na feel kay Lord yung love, yung yung grace niya. 
then uh, that's where my journey started. After here in the seminary, uh, to know more about Christ, about His, uh, no, through church. I am called to be as God, as what God wants me to be. I am called to be a servant, um, to serve His people and His flock. I am called to love, to love His people. I am called to be a shepherd, to guide His flock. And I am called to be a martyr for the greater glory of His kingdom. Inspiration Martyrdom Calling Path to Holiness Participation Path Commitment Covenant Mission Discipleship Sacred an invitation. Grace. We live in very challenging times amidst a pandemic that has caused so much disruption in our lives. Nothing will ever be the same again. As it has been said time and again, but the present crisis is also an opportunity for creative action and adaptation. As this is a decisive call to action, we take heed the words uttered to the prophet Elijah in the first book of Kings chapter 19 verse 7. To take up, go on, for the journey is still long ahead. The Latin Vulgate renders these words of exhortation. Surge grandis tibi restat via. Get up, for a lot of things can still be done and needs be accomplished. This is the voice of the Father towards His children. And to us in the church, we are called to rise up and continue responding with fidelity, humility, and trust to the summons of the Word of God. The calling is not only to get up and rise, go on with the journey, but also to adapt. Adaptation does not only mean survival, but more so responding with courage and commitment amidst adverse circumstances and situations. In our commemoration of the Vocation Month for the year 2020, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, gives us these wonderful words of encouragement for those who are fearful and anxious, yet called and chosen to, to a particular calling or state of life. He says, The Lord knows that a fundamental life choice, like marriage or special consecration to service, calls for courage. He knows the questions, doubts, and difficulties that toss the boat of our heart, and so He reassures us Take heart, it is I, do not fear. We know in faith that He is present and comes to meet us, that He is ever at our side even amid stormy seas. This knowledge sets us free from that lethargy which I have called sweet sorrow, the interior discouragement that holds us back from experiencing the beauty of our vocation. So our special calling or vocation in such interesting and unpredictable times is that we resume our journey of creative action in bearing witness to the presence of the compassionate God 
especially for those who are economically burdened and emotionally overwhelmed by the exigencies of quarantine living, of the oftentimes rigid demands of distance learning, online classes, and module preparations, of families struggling to survive amidst a depleting budget and mounting expenditures, of teenagers losing the sense of meaning and purpose or traumatized by deep wounds that have surfaced due to the lockdown, of medical and civilian frontliners exhausted and undercompensated amidst their endless sacrifices for the COVID-19 victims and their families. We who respond in a special way in the church have to be firstly sensitive and empathetic to the difficult and painful reality of living and struggling day by day, being endured by our brothers and sisters nowadays. Priests, religious, and seminarians are called towards awareness and responsiveness through their conscious solidarity with those most grievously affected by the pandemic. This is not the time to enjoy prestige or flaunt the privilege of having safety nets in our state of life as servants of the Word of God and shepherds of His flock. This is rather a time of vigilance and faithfulness to prayer, selfless charity, generosity, and sacrifice. Can we priests and religious still be adaptable or even be considered relevant to a time and circumstance when our usual manner of ministering and being present in the church is hindered or limited? With the help and encouragement of the Good Shepherd, we respond with loving trust that we, be, that we be guided on what needs to be done first and how we ought to respond in consideration of the community and the people that we are responsible to. And so, for those listening to these words, especially for young men in our diocese, we invite you to rise up on the journey of discovering your call and responding with creative freedom and courage. Be one with us. Be one of us here in the Pastor Bono Seminary, pro obibus suis, giving and sharing our lives for the Lord's flock as seminarians and priests for the Archdiocese of Zamboanga.